Hi. In this tutorial, we're going to cover sample metadata, the key to gaining biological insight from your data. And this is a quite a large topic. So to begin, I want to show you how you can dive deeper into this topic, because in this tutorial, we're just going to cover the basics to uh, that are required to just enough to get you through this tutorial. So if we open a new tab and go over to docs.chime2.org, you'll see on the left here, we have tutorials. Click there, and then you can scroll down to find the metadata tutorial. Metadata in Chime2. So this tutorial, this is gonna be the deep dive version of this tutorial. So we'll cover some of the topics that are mentioned here on this page like formatting requirements, validation, and comments, and identifier columns. But if you really want to dive deep um, and really understand this topic deeply, which I highly recommend, go over to the metadata tutorial afterwards when you have time. So then what will we learn? In the previous lecture, you went over metadata uh, from a more high-level theoretical perspective. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover the sort of nuts and bolts on the command line. So understanding metadata in Chime 2 and how to inspect metadata on the command line and the relevant commands involved in that, uh, not just the commands that we went over in the uh, command line interface refresher, but uh, Chime 2 specific commands for metadata. Um, we're also going to go over metadata column types. Chime2 has a somewhat of a special format for its metadata, um, and we'll learn what that is and how to take advantage of it and why it's important. And we're also going to look at viewing Chime2 artifacts, which end in .qza, and Chime2 visualizations, which end in .qzv. And you will see that in uh, throughout the rest of these tutorials. <clears throat> We're also going to go over the general workflow that you'll use throughout the rest of these command line tutorials. So that includes copying and pasting and then running those Chime 2 commands in the Secure Shell app. Um, also getting a link to the output. So a lot of these commands are going to give you what we call artifacts or visualizations, which I just mentioned. And then we're also going to cover how to navigate to a website called view.chime2.org. And that's going to allow us to view the data, visualizations, and provenance, which I will uh, discuss in more detail. Before we get started, let's go ahead and briefly review how to log into the workshop server using the Secure Shell app. If you've already done this, then don't worry about it. Uh, you just be patient as we go through this step one more time. Uh, we have a lot of different skill levels in this workshop, so we just want to take it slow at the beginning and make sure that we're all on the same page. So first step is to type in the URL chrome colon dash 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 apps, enter, and find the secure shell app icon here. Click on it. And if you've already logged in, all of this information is going to be pre-filled. Uh, but let's do it again one more time. So type in your unique username and workshop dash server dot chime to dot org and press enter. Type in your unique password and again nothing is going to show up here. That's perfectly normal. Enter and we're in. <clears throat> I like to clear the screen at the beginning and it's always nice to take a peek and see what we have here. Should be mine's empty and unless you've created something it should be empty as well. And we need to change into our workshop directory. And then one more change directories into the mouse tutorial directory that you should have created in the CLI refresher tutorial. And with that, let's get going with sample metadata. So let's get started by going through an example of this general workflow by heading over to docs.chime2.org. Here on the left, you'll see the table of contents, and down below, tutorials. Go ahead and click tutorials. That's going to expand to give you more options, and if you scroll down, 
we will see the Parkinson's mouse tutorial. From here, scroll down to the metadata section. Now let's copy our first command. You'll remember the first step in our general workflow is to copy a command. And the first command is downloading the metadata that we're going to be working with. So typically, if you're just working on your own computer, you would click this link and it would download the file here. <clears throat> and you could open that and view it on your own computer. So this is the file, what, this is what the file looks like. And I'm just viewing it here locally on my laptop, on my MacBook. Um, however, we're gonna need this, I'm gonna exit out of here. We're gonna need this on the workshop server. Uh, and that's what these tabs here are for. Um, wget and curl are the name of Linux utilities. Um, we're going to go with wget, which is the first option here, just to make sure we're on the same page. And this does the same thing, but it uh, will, when you when you run the command on the secure show up, it'll download it to the workshop server. So let's uh, go ahead and copy by clicking this clipboard icon, and going coming over here to the secure shell app and you can paste it into the terminal here and on a macbook it's command v on a windows machine i believe it's control v and here it's telling us uh that wget is going to output capital o for output the file to this file metadata a file named metadata.tsv and this, the last part of the command is just the URL where that file is located on the internet. So press enter. We're going to get a bunch of nasty output from wget. You can pretty much ignore that, uh, except for the last part. You can see here it says that metadata.tsv uh, was in fact saved. I'm going to clear my screen to get rid of all that stuff. If I press ls, I can see that I do in fact have the metadata file. And um, the file is located in my working directory, which you'll uh, always have up here in the sh Secure Shell app. This is a unique feature of the Secure Shell app, uh, which is kind of convenient. And the important part here is that you are in the home directory named after your username and in the workshop directory. That's going to be very important uh, moving forward, and I, I will show you why. You'll remember from this slide on the workflow that the second step is to get a link to the output. Um, and by output, I mean uh, the output of the command that we just ran, in this case, which uh, was metadata.tsv. So in order to get the link to that, we're going to open a new tab. We need to navigate to a URL workshop dash server dot chime to dot org slash your username in my case zippy oxalotl make sure you type in your unique username if i press enter this is actually going to show me the contents of that workshop directory so if i go back over to the secure shell app i can uh, if i move into the workshop directory by uh, typing cd dot dot to move one directory back. And at ls, I can see the contents of this workshop directory is uh, a folder, mouse tutorial. And that's where I just was. So I'm going to jump back into there by typing cd dash. And that's a special command to go back to where I just was. Now, if I go back over here, <clears throat> again, this is uh, the workshop directory. Um, and then, so what, what's happening here is I'm, I'm viewing the files in the, that are in the workshop server from my browser, as opposed to the secure shell app. So if I click in this mouse tutorial directory, I can see the metadata file. Now what's going to happen if I click on here is it's just going to download the metadata on that TSV file. And, um, I'm going to come back to my slides real quick because, uh, the next step uh, was to view uh, the data at view.chime2.org. I'll show you if I open a new tab and go over there, view.chime2.org, um, you'll see that 
This is meant for viewing uh, .qzas and .qzd files, uh, artifacts or visualizations, directly from our browser. Um, so the, there's one step that we're missing here because we have a metadata.tsv file. And what we need is a .qza or a .qzd. So let's come back over here to the tutorial and see what's next. So the next step is a another chime2 command, and we're going to copy it just like before by clicking the clipboard and coming back over here to the secure shell app. I'm going to paste the command, press enter. So chime metadata tabulate. This command takes a input file, uh, which is a tab delimited format, and and it outputs a visualization. So this is the .qzv file that we needed. And uh, just one quick tangent about Chime2 commands. We, we use a convention on the uh, Chime2 command line interface in, that you'll see throughout the workshop, and that is to prefix commands with a, a meaningful letter. So this dash in, you might be able to guess, uh, dash dash in, means metadata. So that's telling us that this input file needs to be metadata. And this dash dash o, that, that stands for output. So you'll see these prefixes on a lot of commands throughout the tutorial. And I'll, uh, I'll show you a couple more in the next ones. So we have this visualization, uh, metadata.qzv. Um, now if I come back over here to my uh, workshop server.chime2.org slash username URL um, and I reload, refresh, it's going to refresh the contents of what's now in the directory after we've run that command. In order to get the link to this URL, simply right click and click on copy the link address. Now, on my clipboard, I'm going to have the URL that is needed by view.chime2.org. So, down here, it says I can provide a link to the file um, from the web. So I'm going to click there, and that's going to give me the option to paste in. So I can right-click uh, paste, or Command-V, Control-V, and this is my unique link. You can tell it's unique because that's my username to my, meta, my metadata um, Chime visualization file that I just generated with the Chime metadata tabulate command. So let's click go and see what happens. So what we have here is essentially a spreadsheet, but in Chime's specific uh, visualization format, which is being viewed using view.chime2.org. Now you'll see that um, just like a normal spreadsheet, we have column names up here at the top and rows with values for each of those columns. Uh, the difference here is a few, a few things. One, we can sort this spreadsheet using these buttons here, uh, or sort the visualization rather. Um, and one thing to note about that is that you can't really mess this up because this is a view only format. So we can't change any values in here. I'm clicking, I can't change anything. When I sort, there's no way of messing up the sorting, um, which you may have done in Excel or Google Sheets before. Um, the other notable thing is that in addition to the rows and the column names, we also have a, an additional row here. And uh, this leads me into my next topic, um, which is all about types in, meta, in Chime 2 metadata. So in addition to the normal parts of a spreadsheet that you're probably familiar with, we also, as I mentioned, have types, column types in Chime2 metadata. So Chime2 currently supports two types of metadata columns. Uh, that's categorical and numeric. Uh, jumping back over to the visualization, you will see we have mostly categorical and numeric. <clears throat> and from here, it might be a little difficult to tell the difference because you can see a numeric column here it all has numbers, yet this categorical column has numbers as well. So what's the difference? What gives? Well, term 2 has a uh, heuristic for inferring the column type. So if it's if the column has only numbers, 
or missing data, then Chime 2 will guess, make a best guess that it's numeric data. If the column contains any non-numeric values like, like letters, then it's going to guess that it's categorical. Uh, missing data are supported in both categorical and numeric columns. So you can see here, going back to this example that I just mentioned, um, because Chime 2 would have guessed that this column is numeric because it only contains integers, as well as this column, um, we need to explicitly tell Chime 2 that this is categorical. And the way that we do that is with uh, comments, basically. Um, so if, we, if I come back over here to the Secure Shell app, I'm going to um, take a peek with uh, the less command into this metadata.tsv file. Remember, this is the original file that we started with to generate that visualization. So I want to make sure that I create the link between this file and the resulting visualization. So. Here we have, uh, you'll, you'll notice that all these column names match up. It's really just the same exact information that's in here. This is just a pretty version of it, basically, and read only. Um, and under here, we have these, uh, these type declarations. So the first one is a comment. It starts out with a um, hashtag, and it's just telling Chime2 that this line is going to contain our types, our metadata column types. And here, all of these are metadata column types, and they correspond to what we have here. Um, and again, this uh, is very important because it allows us to explicitly specify the types of these metadata columns. And uh, the reason that's important is because uh, while this mouse ID isn't, they are in fact numbers, uh, we need Chime2 to know that it's actually categorical metadata. So for example, we don't, we're not going to be doing, we're not going to be doing any math on these numbers. Um, and they are categorical in that while there is a infinite range of numbers between 547 and 546, say, there is no mouse ID that is 547.2, for example. So it's very important that we explicitly specify that, uh, that metadata. And um, that has the advantage of our metadata, it makes our file more descriptive and unambiguous. So this comment directive is very important because it allows us to explicitly state the column type and avoid the column type inference, which I uh, discussed previously up here. Um, so again, as we discussed with the mouse ID example, it's useful if apparently numeric data should be treated as categorical. Uh, another example, a subject column or subjects are labeled one, two, three. So just to go in a little more detail about how this comes into practice, um, it really comes into play when we're talking about doing statistics on our, um, with our metadata. So numeric data is a continuous variable. We can do math on it. Um, and that means there's an uncountable set of values. Um, with numeric data, we can do correlation tests, whereas with categorical not, uh, data, we can't do correlation tests. But we can do other types of statistics like group significant tests. And categorical data, uh, another way of describing it is that it's discrete variables, finite permitted values. So that's all for the introduction to metadata in Chime 2 for this workshop. Uh, remember, this is a uh, there's a whole lot more to this topic. So if you want to really dig in, head over to the document home, uh, documentation homepage uh, at docs.chime2.org. Scroll down underneath tutorials and you'll find more information in the metadata in Chime 2 tutorial.